Hi, in this lesson, we're going to learn about for loops. Let's go. In the last lesson, we learned how to use while loops, which allow us to run a program until a certain condition is met. In this lesson, we are going to learn about another programming tool that we can use to iterate sequences of code, the for loop. For loops allow us to repeat a set of statements a specific number of times. Here is the general format of a for loop. For loops are made up of three components, the variable or initialization, a Boolean expression, and the increment. The code in a for loop will execute if the Boolean expression is true and will repeat until the Boolean expression is false. The flowchart for a for loop looks very similar to that of a while loop. The big difference, however, is that the increment element for the for loop is built into the structure. Whereas in a while loop, we had to create a counter to stop while loops from running endlessly, for loops have a counter or increment built into the initial header. Let's take a deeper look at the different components of the for loop header. The first component of the for loop is the initialization. In order to create a for loop, we need to create a variable that will be used to control the flow of the for loop. This variable is often referred to as the loop control variable. In this case, we initialize a variable i and set its value to zero. The next component is the Boolean expression. We need to create a Boolean expression that will eventually become false, so the for loop will stop executing. In this case, we've set the Boolean expression to i is less than three. This implies that as long as i is less than three, the for loop will continue to execute. The last component is the increment. The increment changes the value of the loop control variable and is executed after the for loop is executed. This increment is increasing the value of i after every time the for loop finishes executing. Because of this, the value of i eventually increases to 3, which will stop the loop. Let's take a look at this in action. In this particular program, the value of i is being printed during every iteration of the for loop we can use the value of the loop control variable within the for loop. Once the loop ends, the value of i is no longer within the scope of the program and cannot be used in other areas of the program unless reinitialized. When the program gets to the for loop, the first thing that occurs is the initialization of the loop control variable. In this case, the variable i is assigned to the value zero we are going to pay close attention to the value of i throughout this program. The next thing that occurs is a test of the Boolean expression. Since i is less than three, the expression evaluates to true and the for loop will execute. The value of i now is printed to the console, which now holds the value of zero. Next, the increment is executed. Once the for loop is done executing, the increment is executed so as to change the loop control variable the value of i is now 1. The next call is back to the Boolean expression, not to the loop control variable initialization. The loop control value is only set at the beginning of the for loop. Since the Boolean expression is still true, the for loop executes. The value of i is printed to the console. Now i is 1. Again, the increment is executed and the value of i changes. The Boolean expression is still true, so the for loop executes again. The value of i is then printed to the console, and 2 appears. The increment is executed once more, and the value of i increases by 1. Now that i is 3, the Boolean expression evaluates to false. As a result, the for loop no longer executes and moves to the next line of code following the for loop. This is a flowchart of the for loop we just examined. Notice that the increment is a built-in component of how the for loop executes its code, and that it occurs at the end of the for loop execution. It's important to note that the loop control variable doesn't have to start at zero. We can manipulate the value of the loop control variable to be any number, or even assign it the value of another variable. In this example, the variable i is assigned to the value one. When the program runs, the first output will be the number 1 instead of 0. We can also set the value of the initialization variable to another variable value. Here, we can set the initialization variable to starting num. When the program runs, only the value 2 is output 
as that is the starting value. We can also manipulate the increment value. On the left, we are increasing the value of i by 5 each time the for loop executes. And on the right, the value of i is actually decreasing each time through the for loop. To change the increment, oftentimes we rely on compound assignment operators. If you need a refresher on those, go back to lesson 1.4. It's important to note that the increment, Boolean expression, and loop control variable all can have a subtle impact on our programs. In this case, the difference between writing i is less than 20 and i is less than 21 is the difference between including another value printed in the console. We need to pay close attention to Boolean expressions so that we are iterating through the for loop the correct number of times. If we want to include the value of 20, for example, we would need to write the program as i is less than or equal to 20 or as i is less than 21, so as to include the value of i when i equals 20. If we fail to change the Boolean expression, then the values that are output are going to be off. When a for loop iterates one too few or one too many times, as was in the case in the last example, it's referred to as an off by one error. Let's say we wanted to create a program that counts from one to 10. Here's a for loop that we hope can do the trick. When we run the code, we can see that the values printed only go up to nine. This is because the user forgot to include the value 10 in the Boolean expression as a value that should also be printed. This is an example of an off by one error because the user didn't account for the additional number. If we change this to less than or equals 10, the program will print the intended result. We could have also changed it to less than 11 to achieve the same result. If you've noticed that while loops and for loops share some similarities, you're right. We can actually write for loops as while loops and write while loops as for loops. Let's take a look. If we wanted to count up from zero to four, we can write a program using a for loop or a while loop. We can actually see the components of a for loop being used in a similar capacity in the while loop. The loop control variable for the for loop can be found as the initial counter used in the while loop. The Boolean expression exists equally in both. And the increment is also present. For while loops, the increment is a part of the actual execution, whereas in the for loop, it belongs in the initial header. If both looping mechanisms are so similar, then why have two different types? In general, the main difference between the two is that while loops work better when we aren't sure how many times the program is going to need to repeat itself, and for loops are most useful when the number of iterations is determined beforehand. Let's take a look at some examples that prove this to be true. Let's imagine a user needs to create a password for their new account. The user is expected to make a password that is eight characters long and cannot continue on to the next part of the account creation until their password is the correct length. In this case, we cannot know with absolute certainty how many times this user is going to enter the incorrect number of characters. As a result, the while loop makes more sense because there is no explicit increment that we are using to terminate the while loop. Instead, we want the user to keep entering a password until it's the correct length. We could technically write this as a for loop, but it would be much more difficult. What would we set the increment? When we know how many iterations we are going to be making, it's much easier to use a for loop. In this case, a user wants to know which numbers are divisible by three from zero to 100. Because we know the range, it's much easier to write this program as a for loop because the increment is more straightforward and can be included in the for loop header instead of as another statement in a while loop. This could also be written as a while loop, but would require more lines of code and is more susceptible to an infinite loop. We can write this for loop in a different way if we manipulate the for loop header. Can you think of another way to write this for loop that doesn't require an if statement? We can actually get the same result if we change the loop control variable to equal three and the increment to increase by three each time through the for loop. Instead of going through every value from one to 100, this is skipping the two numbers between i and i plus three. 
For small programs, this doesn't change much in terms of runtime, but larger programs may see an increase in speed if we are reducing the number of iterations the for loop has to go through. Always consider efficiency as you're coding. Now that you've learned about for loops, let's try to complete some problems in the code editor.